everyone, welcome back to my next video. Um, my son wanted to come to live with me. We'd been divorced and my son decided he wanted to come and live with me. I lived in a van in Anchorage for six years and I insulated it really well and had heaters and it was very comfortable. Well, I couldn't live with him in the van because he was still in school. He needed to go to high school. So I, I bought a 24 foot travel trailer and put it in one of the very few uh, RV parks in Anchorage that stayed open year round. The most miserable experience of my life. It was unbelievably cold winter, 30, 40 below, numerous times, and that miserable piece of crap 24 foot travel trailer, you could feel the, the cold seeping in through every corner and every nook and cranny. It was awful. Uh, it, was, it really was unpleasant, and I did a lot to, uh, to keep that trailer warm. That's another video. Maybe I'll do a video on all the things I did. Way back then, I didn't even think about photos or videos, so I don't have any, but I wish I did. At any rate, I know a lot about living really cold. In fact, uh, during that time frame, I was working nights. My son was going to school during the day. So at night, I would go outside and sleep in the shell of my truck or during the day because I slept during the day. And uh, so he'd get up and go to school and come home, and I'd be in bed. And I, I didn't, uh, I had to go to sleep while he was still getting ready and I had to go stay asleep when he came home. So I slept in the shell of that truck at 30 and 40 below that whole winter. And so I know a little bit about uh, extreme, extreme cold. And I'll tell you everything I know in this video to help you while you're stuck where you are. Now we're gonna move ahead and talk about actual sleeping because you're gonna sleep when it's really, really cold. And, and you may not be able to have heat on, uh, or you may not want to have a heat on. You can leave an Olympian heater on overnight. I've done it. The two key, and you, but do not do it with a uh, Mr. Buddy. I don't recommend that. The manufacturer doesn't recommend it. And anytime you break a manufacturer's rules, you're asking for trouble. Don't do it. Um, but if you don't have any heat, so I like I use my stove, and I've done videos on all these things. You can watch those videos. I'll put links on them down in the description. Uh, and I'm never going to run an open flame overnight, except for the, the alcohol heater, and I would run that overnight. Uh, I've done, I have run it overnight. Um, so you're going to be cold at night, really cold. You could be down, you know, it, it could be down into the teens easily at night. So how do you stay warm at night while you're asleep? We're going to go over a lot of those things, because I've done it. I've slept a hundred nights at least at 30 below with absolutely no heat going on around me. So I know how to do it. The most important thing I can tell you about it is you don't want to lose your body heat below you. That's the most important thing. If you buy the best down bag, when you lay down on it, all the downs compressed underneath you. There is zero insulation by that little piece of nylon and all that compressed down. So that's, that's not going to help. Your ba best bit down bag in the world isn't going to help your back. And if your back's cold, you're going to be cold. So it's really important that you have something warm underneath you. Do not buy memory foam because memory foam gets hard when it gets cold, and when you lay on it, it gets softer from your body temperature. But it's hard, frozen hard, and really cold. Do not buy memory foam for extreme cold. So what I recommend are, are these um, uh, self-inflating uh, sleeping pads that, for backpackers. This one happens to be from REI. But Thermarest is a big one, and Big Nag Agnes makes big ones, and there are a lot of them, and nearly all of them are good. What makes these so special is that they actually have insulation inside them. They have an R factor. I think it's usually like around R3 or 4 per inch, R2, R4, I'm not sure. Each one are different, and each pad is a different thickness. This is a, uh, not a real backpacking pad. This is for use in, because it's so heavy. This is three and a half inches, and it's extraordinarily comfortable. And so it's full of insulation, and you can just open up the valve. Let's see, push to lock, push to open. So you can hear that when, when you lay on it, air comes out, and you can get them down as soft or as hard as you like. And that's the thing I love the most about them. You want a really firm mattress, it can be really firm. You want it to be really soft, it can be really soft. And so I really love that. I love the insulation. This is what I recommend for extreme cold. Nothing's going to beat this because you're warmed up. Uh, it's going to keep heat into your back or if you're a side sleeper, onto your side. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, how you're going to, what you're going to use to, for blankets to stay warm. Um, 
you have two choices, just to use regular old blankets and to use a really good down sleeping bag or just buy cheap sleeping bags. And you know what? Any of them will work um, because I don't deal with extreme cold. I mean, uh, 20 degrees would be really, really cold for me. I don't think of in terms of buying a really good down bag. This belongs to KC, and so she, uh, she loves this down bag. We're going to talk about it and review it. Uh, but I just use regular old sleeping uh, uh, covers. I like covers. I like the layering of covers. So I have a, a down comforter. It's, it's an all down alternative. It's not uh, actual down. And I actually prefer that. I don't recommend down comforters because once they get wet, they lose all their loft. Water is just really bad for staying warm. And so uh, down alternatives will keep you warm even if they're a little wet, just for your body. Overnight, your body will lose a quart of moisture. Well, that moisture is going somewhere, and the first place it goes is right into your bag, right into your clothes, from your clothes right into your bag. So uh, I recommend a down alternative comforter as a very heavy outer layer, and then thinner layers. You're going to layer exactly like we did with our clothing. Very heavy outer layer, middle layer, uh, light layer, a very light layer. And so in the summer, you just use your very light layer. That might just be a fleece blanket. Uh, that might be all you need. And uh, you can, actually I have one. Let me show you one. So this is just a, a light, cheap fleece blanket. And in the summer, this is probably all you need. Or maybe even a flannel sheet. Uh, in the summer, that's all you would need. Or just a plain old cotton sheet. So something very light. And then the next layer would be a little heavier blanket, a little heavier blanket. And finally, your uh, very heaviest, warmest blanket. Now that's comfortable for me. That's what I grew up with. Um, I grew up in Alaska. I lived in Alaska. We moved to Alaska when I was six years old. So growing up cold with a lot of heavy blankets, uh, I tell you what we had a lot of, what, because the, it was flooding the market back then, was um, the green army wool blankets. We had those and we really the ones we loved were the white navy blankets because those were all pure wool and they were thick and man they were wonderful. And I like I, So I grew up with the feel of weight on me. There was green heavy army blankets and wore navy blankets, and then we added our own blankets. Uh, and so I, that's what feels good to me. We're all different. Maybe that doesn't feel good to you. Uh, but I do like that. And so I just use plain old blankets, and I, I, I'll roll over so that the blanket full, pulls in behind me, and then I'll kind of roll back, and I'll roll over this side so the blanket pulls in beside me. And then I've kind of created my own mummy. And I don't like mummy sleeping bags. I've slept a lot of nights in mummy sleeping bags. I, they just, I, I feel really enclosed. I, I'm, I don't like that. Maybe you perfect, they're perfect for you and you love them. That's great. Um, and we're going to show you kind of an alternative here, uh, one that will work for you. So, uh, again, it's just, the blankets is just like your clothing, just layers. Uh, you keep adding a layer as it gets colder, and then as it gets warmer, you take a layer off. And I find that by far the perfect solution. And again, a down alternative blanket or a real down comforter uh, as the ultimate, you know, it's, it's really cold, I gotta stay warm, that comes out and I always carry one. Uh, now, if you like a good down sleeping bag, we happen to have found a really, 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 really good one. Um, because I'm not a big fan of, of uh, mummy bags, this belongs to KC, my assistant, and she rants and raves about this thing. She said, Bob, you've got to make a video about these things. People will love them and it'll help them stay warm, especially when it's 38 below in Indiana. And so um, we, we're going to tell you all about this sleeping bag. So Casey uh, is just like me. She doesn't li feel comfortable in a mummy sleeping bag. It's too confining. Um, and she has a little bit of claustrophobia. So she looked around for the biggest mummy bag that she could find that was a 15 degree down bag. And she came across this on Amazon. It's made by Hike and Bike. And she loves this thing. It had stunningly good reviews on Amazon. Everyone loved it and raved about it. And it has the unique advantage of not being uh, claustrophobic. And the, the way that can be, still be really warm and not be claustrophobic, is it's designed to go around a hammock. So it has an opening at the foot and at the bottom so that if your hammock is laid out, imagine a banana, because that's what a hammock is kind of like, you could put it over one end and put it over the other. And so it 
it cocoons the hammock. That's the problem with hammock is you can't keep your back warm. Then you put in a backpack or a sleeping pad and it doesn't conform very well and, and it kind of rolls around and they're slick and they move around. So this solves that problem by cocooning the entire hammock. And it also solves the problem of being so claustrophobic by just being really big around. There's also something new in the down bag industry called quilts. And they're just like down sleeping bags and they have this nice big foot box. This is the foot box where your foot goes. That's what it's called. And, but you, you lay it, your, you put your feet in the foot box so they stay really warm. And then you just lay it around you like a quilt would. So you get that really good combination of quilt and blanket feeling with the openness and yet the enclosure of a really good down bag. Um, and so that's how she does it. She sleeps with her feet in the foot box, the zipper open, and this thing wrapped around her. And it's really a great combination. She says it's incredibly warm. She loved it so much and all the great reviews and, and she herself in it, she bought two of them. And again, that's the perfect way to layer. Layering is so important and it's super high quality. So if it's normal, you know, these numbers are all really optimistic. So a 15 degree bag means it will keep you alive at 15 degrees, but you won't be happy about it. But it will be very pleasant probably at 30. And that's what most of us, you and I are mostly gonna experience, those of you who don't live in the north now, um, and where it's 38 below. So it's a great bag and we really highly recommend it. And because of the uniqueness of going around the quilt, it's really big and open feeling. And yet you can pull it over and bunch it up and around you so that you don't get a lot of open airspace. Now, a big controversy with a lot of people is, do you sleep in clothes at night in a good down bag? And my answer is yes. Uh, I, I will dress in light layers, my lightest layer and then my medium layer, and I will go to bed in, in that, whether I'm in my blankets or whether I'm in a, in a sleeping bag. I think it's very important to have when the, when, when the skin, when the heat leaves your skin, you don't want to have an air gap. And so if it hits a layer of clothing, there is no air gap, it's a tiny one. You want a tiny little air gap. And then the next layer around that is another tiny. And then the next layer around that is a sleeping bag and that's really warm. So I personally, and it's just my opinion, a lot of people would disagree, uh, say no, wear your clothes. Like my, the socks, I showed you the socks setup. I always wear a pair of uh, wool, smart wool, boot socks to bed when it's cold, always. And all those other layers on my lower body because my legs will get cold too, surprisingly. So that uh, base layer of, uh, of a man-made fabric and then the fleece and then just my sweatpants. So I usually wear sweatpants to bed. So you can see just how enormous this bag is. You can see this is a huge area. And so even, even zipped up and it's a center zip, which I really, really like um, that it's a center zip. And, uh, and it has the baffle, you know, the thing along here, which keeps the air from moving through. It's enormous, so it's very comfortable. But here's what makes it really special, is that this, you have a hammock. So if you're sleeping in a hammock, you feed your hammock through here, and, and it comes out. See, and then once you're done and the hammock is through, then you would just close it up and put it, and, and put it back in there so that that hole is all covered up. And it has another one just exactly like it up here. So again, the hammock would, would run through and come through here. So the hammock goes through the bag. That's how you would sleep warm in a hammock. And so this is, these are revered in the hammock community because of this but everyone loves them because they're so so extremely well made they're such an inexpensive price $150 for this bag is incredible and they make such a high quality bag that they sell in volume and then they can they can reduce the price so uh and they have an enormous again it has to go around the whole hammock the, the foot box is enormous very comfortable and easy to get in and out of, in and out of somebody who sleeps in sleeping bags made this thing I think people who have never ever slept in a sleeping bag make most of them. I don't know why they got it so wrong, but nearly I hate nearly all sleeping bags. If you've ever gotten a high quality sleeping bag and tried to zip it up with the side, you can't believe how much easier this was. 
and yet it's comfortable and roomy and I would sleep in here really, really well. Now, one of the most important things you have to do is keep your mouth and nose out of the bag. If you breathe into the bag, it will make you warmer for a little while and then the bag will become full of moisture and you will freeze to death. You must not breathe into the bag. So all mummies, they, that's by their definition, do this so that your nose is out, but your nose is still cold. Believe me, I've slept in 30 below with just like this and your nose is really cold. This is what you do. So you get in, you get your fleece blanket. It's got to be fleece because otherwise the co it's cotton. If it's cotton or anything that doesn't, uh, I think fleece is the warmest thing you can have for its weight or something that won't absorb moisture. That's the key. Do it up, get in, pull it in as much as you want, and then cover your face. And so the fleece will absorb the moisture. I've woken up with, uh, with my fleece filled with frost, uh, but my nose and my face was warm. So at 30 below, your nose has to be out of the ba bag. It cannot be in the bag. You'll fill it full of moisture and you'll wake up really cold. Um, and, and you're going to wake up with frostbite because your nose is exposed. And uh, so a fleece blanket that you, a couple fleece blankets, and these are like two bucks at any dollar store. Some people say wear a hat to bed. I can't wear a hat to bed and I don't understand that. Every time I move around a lot. Maybe I move around more than people. I, I'm a slide sleeper for the most part. I start my night's sleep on my back, sleep on my right side, sleep on my left side, sleep on my right side. I, I'm not keeping a hat on. And I've, I have never gone to bed and woke up with a hat on my head. So to my mind, that's a pipe dream. So here's what I do instead. I'd get myself comfortable, I'd get my blankets in, tuck them in, pull them in, and then I would pull my fleece blanket in like this. And of course I wouldn't have glasses on. And I would just do that. And then if I, I I'm not breathing into the blanket, it covers my eyes so it's dark. Uh, this works really well. And when I roll, and I do roll, I, I roll every night, I roll. It mostly, because it's so big, it will roll with me. And if it doesn't, it's easy just, you know, you readjust at night. We all do that until you just pull up and tuck it in. And then, then you go back to sleep. So uh, this is how I do it. I don't try to wear a hat. If you can wear a hat, great, uh, but I can't. So that's, that's my, my tip. Just, and you can buy these at, uh, at dollar stores for two, three dollars. Walmart will have them on sale occasionally for two or three dollars. They're just really cheap. And fleece because it will keep you warm even when it's wet. One more thing about sleeping. You can always add heat to it. So uh, there's a number of ways to do that. You can buy bean bags uh, and fill them with rice and microwave that. Or you can get hot water bottles. Uh, you can still buy hot water bottles in a lot of places. And they come with, often they'll come with a little uh, fleece cover so that they're comfortable. Uh, another option is the uh, hand warmers. Uh, that you, you know, the hand warmers, you, and you can wear them in your shoes and wear them in your hands and wear them around your body. So you can break those and shake them or whatever they need and then put them in the bag. So you can add some outside heat. Another really good option if you have the solar or the power for it is to run, uh, there's 12 volt sleeping pads that you literally supposed to lay on and boy, that really will warm you up. It's amazing. And uh, also uh, 12 volt sleeping blankets. Uh, they're usually pretty small, but they're 12 volt and they're very comfortable. And they will, they will uh, give you a really comfortable sleep. You've got, you've got to have the power to get that through you tonight. They're uh, commonly available at truck stops. Any truck stop in cold country would have one of those available. Um, and so you can get them on Amazon and probably maybe at Walmart, I don't know. So those are, you can, there's ways that you can bring the heat into bed. And when you get into bed, you don't go through that cold, shivering uh, phase before you finally warm up. So if you get into bed and it's already pre-warmed, uh, I think you'll stay warmer overnight. Well, I hope you got something out of all of this. And all, you know, all my cold nights in Alaska are finally paying off now that I'm in the desert. Uh, and hopefully you can learn something out of my lifetime of experience in the cold. Now, all the uh, products that we've talked about, I'll have them uh, a link to them, an Amazon link, in the description. And if you use that link, I'll make a small percentage on your purchase, and it won't cost you anything. Then all my shivering cold in, the, in, in Alaska will pay off for me, and I'm okay with that. And uh, it won't cost you a thing. 
So if you got anything out of this video, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up button, 